On today's episode of Press Play, we are answering some big questions, like is Chick-fil-A leaving OCU and what are the new OCU COVID-19 protocols? We've got presidential coverage, plus a look at OCU's new podcast. All this and more, only on Press Play. Hello and welcome to Press Play, Oklahoma City University's news and sports magazine, sharing stories you want to know. I'm Ava Krushan. And I'm Kaylee Krimmel. We begin our show with some campus news. Around 10 o'clock on February 15th, one of the housing facilities, Methodist Hall, faced major flooding on the fourth floor. Press Play got student accounts of this incident. Ree Powell, junior political science major, tells us about his experience with the flooding. Of course, many of us were not sure if the fire was, the fire alarms were real, if it was an actual emergency because of multiple fire alarms that week. This miscommunication led to many students like Claudia Campbell staying in their room while the fire alarm was going off. So we didn't think much of it until it didn't go off, like it kept going off. Um, and so then we finally decided to leave the building and once we got outside we realized that the building was flooding and ceilings were falling. The flooding was due to the historical low temperatures in Oklahoma and a sprinkler had burst in a common space on the fourth floor which leaked to floors below. Now, my room unfortunately was one of the rooms below where it was affected so I was displaced for a short time but there was no significant water damage. However, that wasn't the case for all students had some water damage to our room, which was why we couldn't stay the night uh, on Monday night. It was just in my bathroom, um, but because there was any water damage at all, we weren't allowed to stay in the room that night. OCU has established COVID-19 testing for students that live on campus. Grouping by last name, students will visit the nursing building once a month to receive a COVID rapid test. These results are returned with back to within an hour to ensure the safety of all of our students. OCU COVID-19 alert has returned to moderate or yellow. This transition to the moderate level comes after a decrease of COVID-19 positive cases on campus. Students are now allowed to have one visitor from campus in their room. The Adult Fitness Center will reopen and student-sponsored events will now be limited to 25 people instead of 10. After three short years, the Chick-fil-A in the Student Center will be waffling its last fry at the end of the semester. PJ Grooms has more on the new dining option taking its place. OCU's decision to change Chick-fil-A in fall 2021 has been a topic on campus. The decision was determined by stats gathered by the students and faculty. Um, so much of the decision behind the transition from Chick-fil-A to an internal um, food option for students really is coming from student uh, outcry and change of opinion. So while Chick-fil-A was originally selected on campus by popular vote by the student body, times and change have shifted with that. And so student opinion and the stances that Chick-fil-A's national brand has taken has made that a um, less agreeable option for campus. Here's thoughts from students as Chick-fil-A is still liked by many. I do not think that is a good option because Chick-fil-A is a popular choice. Chick-fil-A, that was a go-to. For me, I've been here three, four years, so I was getting tired of it. It's good to see the switch to the bowls, but for the freshman and sophomore, I would be pretty bummed. Um, I've had the bowl stuff. I've tried it out, and I'm honestly just not a big fan. I wish they'd keep Chick-fil-A around. I like it a lot better. Though Chick-fil-A is tasty, there are many reasons that it's leaving. Well, I, you know, I personally, Chick-fil-A, I think it's good. That doesn't mean everyone else does. It doesn't mean it meets everyone's dietary needs. It doesn't mean that it even fits the mission of our university. Chick-fil-A will close its doors by the end of the semester. New food options will be available by the start of fall 2021. The university has announced that the tuition rate will now be locked into a flat rate for the 21-22 school year. With this change, the school hopes to bring comfort to the families dealing with the pandemic, preparing for the next school year. Minder School of Business was ranked sixth in the country in college consensus, best online MBA program for non-business majors. Oklahoma City University climbed the rankings from last year to this year. 
After this commercial break, we will have an update on the OCU presidential nomination search. Stay with us. Welcome back to Press Play. Current OCU President Martha Berger is stepping down in June. The Presidential Search Committee is welcoming four candidates to campus this week. The names of these candidates have not been announced yet. However, their interviews will take place on March 2nd through March 11th. Each of the finalists will have sessions to meet with students, faculty, alumni, and trustees and staff. The OCU community can ask questions to these finalists in these sessions. You can attend these sessions either in person in the Great Hall or attend on the Zoom webinar option. Following the candidates' interviews and sessions with the OCU community, the Presidential Search Committee will finalize their recommendations in late March. The OCU Mass Communications Department is starting a new podcast focused on student voices. Press Play's Hannah Campbell caught up with the host and has more on the story. This is Starby. Oklahoma City University's podcast made by students for students. This new podcast created through the Mass Communications Department gives students the opportunity to have a voice on campus. As multimedia has evolved over time, podcasts have become a necessary component in content development. Just like television and radio, podcasts are a different method of storytelling. I would be remiss and, and I would not be serving the students well if we did not have that opportunity. The Mass Comm Suite had a room that was almost set up for podcast recording. After a few renovations, it was ready. Adele says the purpose of Starbeat is to provide current and prospective students of OCU a variety of podcast stories. The host of Starbeat, Mackenzie Van Zee, schedules guests and produces the podcast. I love talking with students on campus and I love hearing what they're passionate about. Cat Shirt Tuesdays was the topic for the first episode. Future episodes will feature a variety of student interests and passions. You can find all episodes and more on okcu.edu slash starbeat. Reporting for Press Play, I'm Hannah Campbell. Stay tuned because we will catch up with Student Government Association President Reed Powell to see a glimpse into his first 100 days in office. With the new SGA president inaugurated, Press Play's Ava Krushan visited with Reed Powell, junior political science major, on his first 100 days in office. Reed Powell did not have the normal path to SGA president. However, he was ready for the job. Prior to being vice president, I served as a senator um, within the student senate for SGA. And so serving as vice president, I was able to learn and see how the executive branch can make policy recommendations and have conversations with leaders on our campus. Amidst all the change happening so quickly on campus and in the country, Reed Powell finds the change exciting. Because I think we're seeing at our own university the changes we're wanting to see in the nation and the world around us. And you know, we're having, I'm using the word change a lot, but um, we have a new president at the national level and the university level and the student level. And so I think my hope is that at Oklahoma City University, we're able to create a community that resembles the world we want to live in. Reed Powell also hopes to have the opportunity to become president of SGA in the next upcoming school year. I have never, I have not had the opportunity to actually run for president yet. Um, and so it would be great to have that opportunity to run on my own administration. With the change in the university president, Powell wants to keep the lines of communication open. This will be right when we're transitioning to a new president of the university. And so, of course, one of the most important positions at our university, and that person's going to be choosing 
other influential people and you know setting the trajectory for where a university is going and so I want to ensure that you know students have a seat at the table and that our opinions are valued and being taken seriously and being able to continue to advocate for the student body. Women's wrestling gets bigger and bigger every year and OCU has played a big part. Press Play's Katie Connor joins us now. Thanks Kaylee. Not many people would have suspected the sleepy state of Oklahoma to be a forerunner in providing equal opportunity by being one of the first to offer women's wrestling. But to Oklahoma City University, this was an obvious choice in the next step for their athletic department. Oklahoma City University became part of only six universities to have a women's wrestling team in the 2007-2008 school year. This limited opportunity would allow women the chance to compete at the national level. Hired a coach, his name was Archie Randall, and maybe six months into our first ever uh, men's wrestling program, Archie came to me one day and he said, uh, we need to add women's wrestling. And I'm going to admit that I didn't realize that there was women's wrestling. Uh, and what I told Coach Randall at the time was, hey, look, we got a brand new program that's, you know, we haven't even done much at this point, so let's focus on that for now. Uh, but if you know Archie, Archie was a very persistent guy. And, every, and we would meet every two weeks, which is what I do with all of our coaches, and he keep, kept bringing it up. So finally I said to him, look, bring me a one-page sheet of paper that tells me why women's wrestling makes sense. And he did. I mean, I don't think it was a risk. I don't think it was a chance. I think it was maybe for people outside of the wrestling community that it may seem like it, but for those that were in it, like it was just got accepted into the Olympics. It was starting to grow on the college side. And I think that it was a vision and not a risk. Like it's like this is, we're being proactive. We know where this is going and we're investing in it right now. With OCU being one of the leading teams, it granted some security in the program for current recruits and gave time for OCU to make a name for itself. I think it just it made me a lot more comfortable to commit here because I knew the program wasn't going to drop the second I committed, which I know has happened to a lot of my other girl wrestler friends. And I knew that like we had support by the school that it was going like it wasn't going to be weird on campus like oh who are these girls wrestlers and like is that even a sport? I knew it wasn't going to be like that. People were going to be accepted of it because like a lot of places aren't. It's still very new and people always are questioning it. So being at such a prestigious program, such an established program, you walk into a tournament, everyone's like, oh, that's OCU. Like they've had this, this, this and this. And it's kind of like, yeah, you know what? I'm on this team. I represent this team now. So it feels good to be at such a high caliber program and to live up to that expectation. Even though OCU started a new program, that did not mean the athletic department would allow a pass for these new college wrestlers. These women would still be held to the high competitive nature that is OCU. I think that, that with Coach Randall, that we were the first serious program. Like, no, we're going to be multi-time national champions. We're going, as a team, we're going to breed national champions. And, you know, I could just tell that that's the mentality that the coaches had. And that is what all the athletes wanted. We didn't start it, nor was my expectation that we would win national championships. Um, I, I, uh, but if we're going to if we're going to participate in a sport, there is an expectation that we will be competitive. Um, so I, I would say that to this point, women's wrestling has far exceeded what I thought was possible. And I think we're we're known for. Just being a well-rounded program, we're known for being tough and for fighting tooth and nail for stuff. We don't, we don't let up on each other and we don't let up on our opponents. And I think that it reflects us really well, honestly. I mean, I believe in this program and I, I have no doubt that we are the best overall program. Like as far as academics go, as far as coaching staff goes, as far as teammates go, as far as wrestling goes, like we are the whole package. Coming to the end of their 14th season, OCU Women's Wrestling is now one of 48 programs nationwide, proving that women's wrestling has a bright future for girls around the world. Reporting for Press Play, I'm Katie Connor. Coming up, we have an interview with one of our own from the OCU baseball team. The team has overcome many adversities during the pandemic this season and last. 
Press Play's Cade Stevens sits down with Noah Barks to give us more on the story. All of that and more after this break. Oklahoma isn't your room. So don't trash it. Welcome back to Press Play. I'm Cade Stevens, and we're joined today by OCU junior second baseman Noah Barks to talk about playing collegiate sports during COVID. Okay, Noah, so flashback to your ago today. School starting up, baseball is getting going, and then COVID. Can you tell me where you're at when it happened and like the mindset behind it? Yeah, so we were on the way down to Waxahachie, Texas, uh, to play Sagu, and everything started kind of going down, going downhill. And uh, the NBA started canceling some games. Some other uh, baseball programs started canceling games. So we kind of had a feeling that it might be our last time to play. And after the first day, we got word that our season was postponed. Um, which later ended up being canceled, but I felt like that's right whenever we were starting to kind of put things together, mm -hmm. so it was frustrating, but yeah. that's when it happened. I got you. So uh, COVID changes a lot of plans for everybody. Like, for example, we have a bunch of players on our team that had to decide to come back and play another year or go on and get a job. Right. Did, did that ever cross your mind that you may not be able to play baseball again? Yeah. Um, I Ideally, I'd like to play all, all of my eligibility out, but... Um, there's just some stipulations with the graduate school um, scholarships and then academic scholarships past your first eight semesters here. So I know that, that plays a big role in a lot of people's decision and it will mine too. So I more than likely will be done with an extra year el eligibility, but um, it's still an option I have that I'm always willing to consider. Mm -hmm. So COVID finally settles down for a little bit, able to come back to school in the fall. Uh, can you tell me what it's like with all like the COVID uh, regulations, not only university-wide, but also the daily uh, stuff that the athletes have to do for COVID? Right. Um, I feel like the school's done a great job. I mean, the, I know the athletes have to fill out a COVID questionnaire every day and wear a mask, obviously. I don't, I don't feel like too much is asked mm -hmm. of us, and it's, uh, it's pretty simple, and I feel like it's kind of what we know now, so we're kind of mm -hmm. used to it. It was, it was different at first, but... Now I'm, I think we're all getting used to it, and we're kind of, I think it kind of feels weird to not have a mask mm -hmm. on or not, do, not be taking our temperature or something. That was definitely the biggest thing, getting used to having to wear a mask everywhere you go, right. even playing on the field. Mm -hmm. And then our fall games get canceled. Yeah. So now, like, and now tell me how it is, like, playing games in the spring so far with no fans and even, like, your family and close friends not being able to come watch you play. Right. Um... It's different. It's it's weird playing with nobody in the stands. There's really no, all the energy is kind of brought by either team. Uh, it kind of changes the dynamic of the game, but that's just a. It's not not that much of a difference once you're on the field and playing. But it does kind of stink not having your family or some of your friends there to watch you play. Thank you, Noah, for joining us today. Stay tuned for more after the break. Emily Wallenberg here with your campus weather update. There's a flood of news coming out of student publications. Reporters are out and about across campus covering all the latest stories. Star's soccer team is creating some high winds breezing past the competition. There's a 100% chance of stars shining bright. Students are rehearsing on stage for the big production. There's a severe wind gust warning at Abe Lemons Arena. Stars are blowing away the competition. To find out more about OCU, schedule a campus visit today. March is here, but yesterday marked the end of Black History Month. People celebrate it in many different ways. We caught up with Jasmine Townsville, a Black Student Association member, telling us how she chose to celebrate. Black History Month is a great time to highlight and to look at like what is Black culture and like our um, history. Um, I feel like it's a great start, but it's also just not enough. I feel like it's just doing the bare minimum. Um, for Black History Month, uh, BSA highlighted several black activists and going off of that, um, my favorite black activists are the person who's most important to me. Most influential would probably be Angela Davis. She wrote several books and continues to work at the University of California right now in her activism work. 
That is a wrap on our first episode of Press Play for the semester. Be sure to tune in next time to keep up with all your local and campus news. From everyone here at OCU's Press Play, thank you for watching. Here's another look at that snowy weather on campus last month. Enjoy.